Welcome everyone. Today we have a pleasure to host uh, Professor Jarosław Stolarski, who is a very untypical uh, colloquium for us because he is paleonto, uh, he's paleonto biologist actually. Uh, his alma mater is uh, Warsaw University and then uh, he started to be an employee of the Institute of Paleobiology and the Polish Academy of Sciences. Now he's director of the Institute. So uh, how come that he invited to our colloquium. So we, we used to have often uh, people outside physics, and this will be the case. We met together at the meeting for uh, directors, and during this meeting, where people were mostly discussing some administrative issues, uh, I know, new regulations, things like that. But we had fortunately also short opportunity to discuss science, like I guess five, maybe ten minutes. And uh, despite the short time, we decided it would be nice to show each other what we are uh, doing, especially that there are some projects which are on the border between different disciplines. And maybe you have opportunity, opportunity to see some research in which maybe some of us could uh, contribute uh, in some future. So, uh, Professor, the floor is yours. <laughs> no, thank you. So it's actually my great pleasure to, to be here and uh, present something which was a sort of uh, you know a little bit abandoned by me <clears throat> during during uh, the the studies uh, of uh, corals because this is my main subject of of, of work uh, I, I work on fossil fossil and modern corals which are quite a fashionable topic of course today you know coral reefs are facing the um, the extinction so uh, uh, okay so i decided just to share with you a few of uh, my previous actually thoughts but maybe this will be inspiration and um, as, a, as a picture um, as the first picture I, I decided to, to, to give this picture because it's beautiful <clears throat> it shows the power of physics a little bit destructive but it's, it's real power and also the power of nature because the, <clears throat> the this explosion took place in a in a atoll bikini which was created by by corals so the power of biology a little bit destructive destroyed by power of physics uh, so uh, and by the way I just just a small update uh, the power of biology is quite strong because uh, this is exactly the, the site where the, the explosion took place after uh, 50, 50 years and of course uh, corals are um, reconstructing the, the, the atoll pretty well of course the, 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 the explosion site is uh, still uh, very well visible but uh, the corals are flourishing, I would say, mainly because there are, there are not so many people. And, and so corals are happy and growing. Radiation is not, not really um, interacting uh, so much with them, so, so they are happy. In, it's still, it's still. And all, all the, you know, like fish, or, or they are radiating. So there, there are no people really um, collecting uh, the animals from there. Uh, okay, so um, what I would like to, uh, and this is the main, uh, main aspect, especially concerning corals, to, to discuss how much of the, of the coral growth depends on the environment and how much it is regulated by internal physiological uh, um, regulations. Uh, and especially corals, because, you know, corals are somehow considered primitive organism between the, the really advanced one and really you know they like uh, protists prot 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 are really very low but corals are in the middle in, in the middle and they were for long long time they were considered not really uh, advanced uh, um, animals uh, they were already they, they were elevated to the stage that they are animals because before they were so-called zoophyta between the animals and uh, plants but okay they were recognized in uh, uh, 18th century as animals and then become sort of not primitive or organism. Uh, so I would like to uh, to to, this, to to just overlook uh, over uh, just just to show you a few thoughts about uh, corals. First of all, I will present corals, and second, I will I will uh, look at uh, the na nano and micro scale of of the skeletal of, of the organization of the organism, and then on the micro scale because there are two different scales well, many much much more actually scales on which these processes can be can be analyzed separately or together um, 
so corals, what are corals? Corals belong to the, to the group of so-called cnidarians, so the, the animals which are um, simple, I will show you uh, in, a, in a next slide, I will show you the, 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 the living coral, but they belong to the cnidaria, and the cnidaria, they, they also, you know, the, the jellyfish, uh, the precious corals, they all are, are grouped in, a, in a one uh, phylum. But the, the, the corals, which I will be talking mostly today, are Scleractinian corals, so those which form also reefs. <clears throat> and they are characterized by having the same, more or less, the same uh, body plan as other uh, Cnidarians, but they form the skeleton. And because of the skeleton, you can, you can observe, you can trace the evolution in the fossil record. So uh, you can trace in the fossil record by uh, having, uh, by collecting fossils, but you can also infer the phylogeny and, and, and the, the deep evolution of corals based on molecular markers. For example, this is the, um, the phylogenetic tree, which shows that um, corals, the Scleractinian corals, are actually extremely ancient. So they evolve more or less um, in um, Ordovician time, so 450, <clears throat> about about that time they they uh, appeared they emerged actually this is the fossil mo from more or less this that time and then of course they they flourish today um, uh, uh, and they are known as uh, as uh, builders of the of the coral reefs so there are about uh, 800 species forming the the coral reefs but what what should be also remembered that corals are are forming uh, also sort of build ups uh, deep water in deep water and they are also beautiful. They are also uh, uh, consisting of many, many different species. And the only difference is you, you, you see they are not so much uh, colorful. And this is the, the explanation is very simple. Because, and, and they are also corals that are dwelling really in extreme depths, which is sort of absurd because they, are, they, are, they can live even 7,000 meters. And uh, this is well below so-called uh, CCDs, uh, calcium car carbonate um, compensation zone. So everything what is uh, made of calcium carbonate is dissolved immediately. But those corals are producing calcium carbonate at such depths. So I will return to this uh, very intriguing uh, fact. And, and of course, we have plenty, uh, much more species, much more taxa of the fossil corals, which uh, actually the, the oldest one, um, sort of modern, uh, modern type uh, Scleractinian corals are found in Poland. They can be, uh, you, you can find them in, uh, in uh, Opole, uh, um, in, the, in a, what is the name, the, near, near Opole uh, region. They are the oldest, uh, the oldest corals in the world. Uh, so this, this is just, just to show you uh, the simplicity of the, of the, of the corals. So this is, this, these uh, specimens are actually from our um, cold water aquaria. These are deep water corals, but on the surface they are consisting mostly of water. That, that's why the, 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 there is no, no issue of the depth when, when they are living in the, in the shallow water. And uh, we, can, we can see the sort of, uh, um, we can see sort of, um, you know, the skeleton below. This is the cup-like cup skeleton and the, 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 this is the polyp. The, the, the living animal is sitting on, on, this, uh, on this cup and it's producing the cup, actually. And then, of course, it has to, has to feed, so it has the tentacles. Uh, maybe we will see better uh, uh, zoom in, uh, showing the, well, th this, these body parts are so-called tentacles, uh, which capture the food. Uh, and, then, uh, and then we have, uh, okay, maybe here, or here, here is the opening, the, the mouth of the, of the coral, and then, of course, plenty of the tentacles. So basically, the, the whole organization is very simple. It's like a sack uh, with, with tentacles, with one opening, and then divided by, by sort of partitions. And this partition, so if you remove <coughs> the, the coral, the skeleton is almost uh, identical as the, the, the polyp. Uh, of course, there is no polyp here, but, but you see the partitions, the so-called septa. And uh, the, the whole body organization, the, the body is very simple because it consists of two uh, uh, tissue layers, uh, ectoderm and endoderm. There is a sort of non-cellular mesoglea, and that's it. So this is extremely simple uh, organization, and only this um, lower part of the, uh, of, the, of the tissue is producing the skeleton. Okay, so this is just, just to, to give you the, the, the idea how the coral looks like, what is the, the, how the, the skeleton looks like. 
And um, Darwin, who was uh, one of those who, who actually um, investigated coral reefs, how they, they form, he, he published a book about this, he had no idea uh, why the corals are, are producing the reefs in the middle of nowhere. And, and moreover, not on the, on the middle of nowhere, but in the places which are like a desert. And, and so uh, Dar for Darwin, it was completely un not understandable why, why these corals uh, exist there, where waters are completely, uh, completely you know, uh, oligotrophic, so basically no nutrients uh, in, in these waters. And Darwin, by the way, was not, uh, not swimming, not, not investigating the corals in, in person uh, in, in a reef, so he had no clue. But later, of course, and today we know that, uh, that corals are living in such a desert because they are symbiotic to, to algae. And because of algae, they, can, they, they have access to, to nutrients that the, the algae produce from, uh, from, uh, from CO2 water. And they, um, they, they just exchanged. We have now very, very nice tools that we can show the exchange between the coral host and, and the symbiotic algae. Um, of course, the, there are more symbionts. It was the, still the, you know, the, the sort of um, symbiosis with only with algae was a simplification. Now we know that there is much more organisms, microorganisms living in, a, in this big symbiosis. And that's why, as, as we are, as, as humans, but, but corals, of course, as well, uh, are called holobionts because there are viruses, there are you know uh, fungi, uh, archaea, etc., etc. So there is a big complex of, of microorganisms living together and playing an important function in, especially in metabolic exchange uh, between the, 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 the coral host. So now let's take a look on the, this tiny scale because what was essential was to understand, if we have to understand the variability of, of, of corals and generally understand how, what we can retrieve from the remnants of corals in the fossil record, so the skeleton, we have to understand how the skeleton is formed. So uh, people for, for, for ages were, were, were doing this, that they, okay, this is a modern, modern coral, so it, it, it has the, this cup-like skeleton, when we remove the, the, this, um, this um, tissue, we have the skeleton, and then we remove the part of the, of, the, of the skeleton and make a section. And you know, this is quite unbelievable, but people were uh, doing um, this type of examination of the skeleton, making the sections, which were almost exclusively transverse. So basically making a transverse section uh, you know, the growth direction is like that, and people were doing this type of sections. Okay, so having this type of section, you observe, and this is the uh, polarized microscope, uh, so we observe in the middle something which looks like a tiny, very tiny crystals, and then we have radiating crystals, larger crystals, of course, it's a, you know, this polarized light, so we have a light extension, so the, the crystallographic organization is, is quite uh, consistent between the, uh, this, um, this, this uh, layers of, deposited layers of calcium carbonate. So the idea was, um, so for, for almost for everybody, was that, ah, okay, so we have something like a crystallization. So we have a, a calcif crystallization centers in the middle, and then from which the, the calcification, uh, uh, further calcification occur in, in, in forms of these uh, fibers. Uh, so in, uh, during the Second World War in Australia, uh, the, the, these two uh, people, Brian and Hill, Dorothy Hill, they proposed the model of spherulitic growth as a, as a model of, skeletal, of coral skeleton growth. It was a very influential paper it was cited several times in all uh, coral lit literature because this was a very good explanation. So we have coral is actually controlling only the, the position of this crystallization centers or calcification centers, whereas the rest is just a uh, sort of abiotic precipitation. And, uh, you know, this was so influential, especially among the, the, the geohemises, because geohemises like the simple models, and this is simple model, 
and of course and and actually still today people are are referring to this and using this model as as a uh, as a good model of, of coral growth so they are you know they were they were making the, the inorganically precipitated aragonite and comparing with the uh, aragonite uh, um, pr produced by the uh, aragonite is uh, one of the polymorphs of calcium carbonate which actually uh, corals are, are are mostly using so um, this is the sort of simpli simplified model uh, so we have a crystallization of calcium carbonate in a space where uh, so coral create the space which is necessary and the semi-closed space because uh, uh, it, uh, the the ions has to be uh, the the solution must must be super saturated and then the precipitation occur but the precipitation is basically uh, 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 like abiotic and uh, of course the points where where calcification starts they are controlled by the organism, but the rest is just uh, just abiotic, so the crystals look like uh, abiotic crystals. Um, and then the whole science around uh, corals, around classif classification and phylogeny, interpretation of evolution, was based on this assumption. And for example, this is the so-called Bible of uh, for, for paleontologists, but also for coral specialists, the so-called treatise on invertebrate paleontology, where all the classification was uh, was based on 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 these calcification centers on the crystallization the points where from which the the radiation of the fibers starts and the the whole interpretation of phylogeny is based on this well it worked very well for at least 50 years but then by by the end of the century the first molecular paper um, appeared and this first, the very first molecular paper already show that the system doesn't work. Because already, this, you know, there are not so many mm, corals included in this molecular phylogeny here, but those which are included, they are already the, the, some major groups which were considered so-called monophyletic, so, every, every, so basically one family, uh, they, they, they are dispersed over, over this molecular tree, like, like here like, and here and they are here and they are here so already if at, at that point it was it was obvious that the, the, the this the model the previous model is not perfect however uh, the next and and next uh, analysis completely demolished the model because the the group which was considered one of the most solidly found and defined group of corals uh, uh, very simple uh, uh, structure of the skeleton uh, for example, here on the, in this work it was completely dispersed over the, uh, the tree topology. So the model doesn't work because, you know, we, we should have a consistent model which explains the, the evolutionary relationships uh, also linked to the, to the skeletal features, which is not the case. Uh, you know, this was the moment where, when, when I was uh, working on my, uh, my, my thesis and uh, I realized what is going on. That's probably the, the last moment to, 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 to do something, uh, you know, especially as I, as I was working with the, with the skeleton. So I made a section which was different. And this is, you know, this is not a big discovery. <laughs> this is really not this is a stupid discovery. But if you look at the literature, nobody was doing this. So I made a longitudinal section. Uh, instead of, of making a transverse section, I make a longitudinal section. And what I found it, I found that actually there is nothing like a classification center because all these layers are, are, are growing, uh, you know, continuously. There is a continuous growth. The only difference between the middle part of the skeleton is that apparently there is, uh, this is SEM picture, so there is a little bit etched. So any organics is removed. So we have the, the central region, which is enriched in organics, and the, the lateral sides are mm, somehow, um, there is not so much organic. So we have regions which are apparently growing faster and regions which are growing slower. So this is more uh, related to the dynamics of growth uh, versus a, a model which, uh, which, in, uh, which uh, suggests that, uh, that there must be some seeds, crystallization seeds. Completely different, different situation. 
So together with my friend, we, we actually wanted to test this hypothesis. And so we, we uh, cultured corals in, uh, in aquaria and then labeled them with, uh, with uh, um, stable isotopes, in this case is uh, strontium-86, and then um, making images in uh, nanoseams, so, so good uh, spatial res resolution. And actually the model was, conf was um, supported because we see, for example, here, that uh, this this region which was uh, was growing in a, this is one layer which was uh, growing in in certain time when when we, when we use the label the, the lateral sides are thin whereas this part is thick because it's growing much faster and much more of the isotope is incorporated um, we made a several several uh, um, this type of experiments absolutely confirming that that the this the the, the, this is a continuous growth, but sometimes we have very interesting, uh, intriguing, actually, um, uh, pictures like this. For example, here you see the, the, the labeling, so the layer. If, if we, for example, follow this, this layer, we, we see that there is a continuous growth, but suddenly it, uh, the, the, this, this, the, the, this uh, sort of um, separate units start to be formed. So, so everything grows at the same time, but there are some regions, especially lower in the, in the skeleton, where are detached from the main uh, calcification front. So this, actually, you can already imagine what, what will happen if the process is, uh, continues. It, it, it will create uh, some morphology, uh, morphological structures on the surface, and we can already observe this here, that we have sort of corrugated uh, surface here, whereas here is more smooth, and we can fully uh, understand this when we look at the surface of the, of the skeleton of this particular coral, coral where we see uh, beautiful shingles, which are not observable in other corals, but in this particular group of corals, this, this type of shingles, um, so the, the, this, this, this skeleton grows only in this side, and this site is not growing, and this site is growing, and this site is growing, and, and that's why uh, we have uh, the, 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 the growth front is separated, and when we look in, in, in a thin section, in, you remember the previous sort of simply, sim, simple picture of the, of, the, of the structural organization. Here is much more complex, because we have this sort of um, long uh, packages of fibers which represent uh, these shingles which was you, you, you saw on the previous picture but they are continuously growing and that's why they form uh, this type of snake-like uh, structures in a, in, a, in, a, in a section. So already from these two pictures we see that the, the, there is a complexity. Of course. Why, why grow? Uh, okay, um, that's th 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 a quite basic question. Why, why the, for the skeleton? Well, I would say that the, 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 uh, the corals which form the reefs, this is essential for them to have the support. Because otherwise, if they do, would not have the skeleton, they will be you know, removed from the, from the reef. They, they, they actually have the support. They, they are happy to, uh, to, to, to create the skeleton, which is, which is somehow uh, following the, the, the... Because you know, if you are forming the atoll, there is uh, so many corals around that, they, uh, that there is a subsidence of the, of, the, of, the, of the island. That's why they have to follow the sand. And that's why they, they, they produce the, the skeleton to help them to, to, elevate, to be on the certain elevation. This is... Uh, yes, there is, there is also competition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there is a lot of competition between different strategies uh, uh, in, in, in the... No, well, uh, this is a very interesting question. Uh, uh, in our um, uh, understanding of the uh, interpretation of the phylogeny, uh, the deep water corals, the modern deep water corals, are, are often descendants of the shallow water, so they could, uh, could migrate, already possessing, uh, having the ability to create the skeleton 
they just migrated down, uh, downwards and, and they still pr produce. But, uh, you know, there is, we, we can discuss about this because there is, there is a lot of controversy as well. As, as well. Um, so, um, so now we have the situation that the, 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 we, we, we see the formation of the skeleton is, is very different from the simplistic, uh, let's say, um, crystallographic, crist crystallization model. So people started to look at the, what, what really uh, is in, within the skeleton, and they found there is a plenty of organics, and the plenty, of, course, the, the, of course there is a proximity of the organics, so there is a plenty of organics around, but the, the position, the distribution of the organics was not uh, just random, there was a very strictly uh, linked to the, to the structures. And later, of course, uh, uh, it was possible also to, um, to, to, for example, using the antibodies to, to lo localize the proteins. And they are absolutely also associated with certain, uh, with certain structures. Um, uh, further works, actually, uh, when, when the so-called um, uh, coral acidic uh, proteins uh, uh, were identified, which were uh, identified as proteins which are particularly helpful or involved in calcification. So basically, um, actively, um, uh, in, in they structure, well, they, they do not have structure because they are the in, intrinsically disordered uh, proteins, but they somehow they function is related to the, uh, to the, to the um, metal ions, which can, uh, especially car, uh, calcium, and that's why they are involved in, uh, they are understood as, as, as main uh, proteins involved in a, in a controlled uh, calcification. And the distribution of this, um, of these proteins is not random, again, is clearly associated with a really fine scale structure of the skeleton. So it looks like uh, uh, the coral which, is, which forms the skeleton is producing the, uh, this, um, uh, these proteins and they play particular calcification function. For example, uh, the, the, it may uh, speed up the calcification or slow down and you know all the not only kinetics but but functional meaning of this uh, proteins involved in in a formation of the of the uh, of the of the of the calci uh, calcium carbonate uh, skeleton but i will i will return to this uh, later uh, to 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 show you the analog uh, analogy in a, in a, in a, in life in other other uh, living systems the best analogy is uh, f uh, fish otolites. You know, uh, we also have otolites in our inner ear, but fish have a quite big otolites. They have three pairs of, of these otolites in the inner ear. And, uh, you know, and, and this, the, the structure of this looks like, uh, like this. It's like a very, very similar actually to the simplified model of, uh, of coral skeleton, where we have a sort of seed in the, in the middle and then fibers uh, radiating fr from it. But uh, the experimental studies show that if you manipulate with expression of one gene, so-called Starmaker gene, uh, the, the skeleton, the, this calcium carbonate, completely changed. Not only, you know, morphology of the, of the otolite is just like a, you know, pr st biological structure versus almost like a stone. Completely crystals, you know, s something completely different uh, morphologically. And then also the mineralogy change because the, the, the original uh, otolites are aragonite, so one polymorph of calcium carbonate, whereas this one is calcite, so another uh, calcium carbonate polymorph. So, and of course, fish is not happy with this type of transformation, is basically dying. So, uh, so this shows the power of, of single protein in this, in this particular case, whereas in, we know that in corals, there are many, many, many different proteins involved in calcification. Uh, you know, so actually we are returning our corals to the, to the realm of, of, of biology, of, of, I mean, the crystallization to, to the, to the, to the uh, um, context, biological context. And we know, for example, you know, everybody knows the, 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 the bivalves, which are able, capable to form two polymorphs of calcium carbonate. And this is just one protein, again, or complex of proteins, which shift the, 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 the unit cells, I mean, the, the formation of the, of, the, of the crystals, that they, st uh, this is experimental work uh, with um, sh uh, showing the, the activity fu function of the set of one protein of the, of the C, uh, um, C abalone, where 
from, uh, from calcitic uh, crystal, uh, after addition of the protein, it started to form uh, aragonite. So we, we have, a, we have a clear evidence that, um, that biologic, in biological systems, the proteins, especially proteins, are playing really important function in controlling this uh, atomic level and a little bit uh, above uh, uh, stage of organization of, 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 the, of the skeleton. Um, recently, uh, this was something actually, I, I was very happy that, that I could, uh, could make this, this observation, um, because corals so far were considered only uh, aragonit aragonitic producing uh, skelet uh, animals. And I found um, the, the, this animal, this skeleton, uh, uh, and actually living animal, in the Southern Ocean, which produce uh, two uh, uh, calcium carbonate polymers. So this is very unique coral, um, and now we are actually in a, in a way to, to, int to understand what type of proteins are involved in formation of these two, uh, two type of uh, calcitic versus uh, uh, aragonitic skeleton. And also we are, we are uh, now uh, <laughs> trying to also understand what is the, how, the change, how the, the same protein may change the function depending, for example, on magnesium content in the seawater and, of course, in the internal environment. So there is a plenty of, uh, of work uh, just to understand how this biological system is controlling uh, the, 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 the calcification. And there is uh, also another thing which completely changed in the recent years. It's a sort of paradigm shift, actually, that, you know, uh, to, today, um, you know, till recently, it was considered that um, the crystallization of, of uh, biominerals is basically monomer by, by monomer crystal growth. Whereas now it is, it is re really widely accepted that this is a non-classical model, which, which probably uh, really express the shows the, 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 the reality, which is that we have the amorphous uh, particles which are uh, produced um, internally within the cells and then they, they are expelled outside and form the, the, the sort of um, outline of the skeleton still amorphous and then the, the, it crystallizes. So it's a completely different, uh, different model of, of, of the skeleton formation. And actually, we have more and more proofs of this. This is just just few examples. This is the, um, the, that we have this type of nanoparticles uh, in the coral skeleton. Uh, this, are, uh, this is the coral. This is synthetic uh, amorphous calcium carbonate, and we have, we observe them in the in the real skeleton. Then then we observe also um, in uh, this amorphous phase is observed on the surface of the skeleton as well as in within the cells. And there are some old uh, photographs which also. The, the, the people were, were, were not aware what they are observing, but they were actually observing the, the vesicles that contain uh, he heavily concentrated uh, calcium carbonate uh, liquid in, in, within the cells. So this is, the, this is a completely different situation now. We, we can look at the, 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 the fibers, the, 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 the crystals, biocrystals, call, call them better biocrystals because the process of their formation is really, uh, really, really, really different. So now we are um, now we are uh, we are moving uh, up. We are going to the macro scale um, to, to again to address the problem of how much is dependable on on the biology and how much maybe the environment is changing this. And this is the example which actually uh, shocked me when when I visited my my colleague in in Marseille because uh, I, I was familiar with this coral. Um, just snorkeling, knowing how this Cladocora coral looks like, and this was the sort of massive coral. You, you can you can have this uh, this um, this type of morphology here. Uh, all these coralites are are crowded; they form one big uh, colony. But then the coral was was uh, taken from from the environment and put in the aquarium, and then suddenly something completely changed. The morphology completely changed. So. The, 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 this massive uh, colony started to be sort of um, separated and individual uh, co corals, uh, individual polyps started to form a sort of tube-like uh, skeleton. So obviously something which was related to the environment uh, and, and resulted in this complete, complete change of the, of, the, um, of the morphology. And actually this was, this was something which was uh, already more or less at the same time observed 
that um, for example if you if you have the the, the reef corals and you you really are, are very good uh, biologists and and try to uh, to recognize the species and you 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 just uh, snorkel or, or or dive along the the reef you observe that more or less the same coral looks very differently in different environments but this is the same coral of course at that time they they were they had no molecular tools but uh, they they had uh, absolutely impression that this is the same coral now we have tools uh, me uh, no actually i i am the only uh, worker in the institute who works on coral so i am okay <laughs> So actually, I am, I am not a typical bi biologist because my, my colleagues mostly work with uh, dinosaurs. Of course, they were usually fascinating, but, uh, you know, uh, for me, the, the, the corals are actually super fascinating. Uh, so now, now we have, uh, of course, tools. So we, th this is actually my colleague from, from Israel who, who has uh, the permit to, to go really deep, um, uh, diving deep, deeply. So uh, she, was, she was diving... Uh, uh, in in uh, a lot, I think yes, and and uh, uh, from from the shallow water, from the basically from the surface to to, to 80 meters or, or 100 meters, collecting the same uh, the same species and then having confirmation, uh, having confirmation the molecular confirmation that this is actually the same coral, and observing that, uh, of course, th there is a, a morphology change. You, you see that there is a very different morphotype in a shallow water, very different morpho morphotype flat, sort of uh, wide uh, morphotype in a, in a deep water. But this was very interesting, by the way, this was very interesting uh, experiment because uh, there were also, uh, there were transplants. So the specimens from the deep water were taken to the shallow water and from shallow water to the deep water and we, we observe actually what, what, what is going on. And yeah. No, 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 genes. No, no, they, they, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. This was, uh, just how to do this. Ah, okay, here. No, no, this, these are genes, uh, CO1. This is the, the, the marker which is typically used for, for the interpretation of, of such a uh, phylogeny. Um, so what we observe, uh, so, I, I told you that we will go into this sort of macro scale, but just just a very brief uh, insertion of, of, of sort of still micro scale, which was extremely interesting because we observed that there, is, there was um, different gene uh, activity between the shallow water and deep water morphotypes. And uh, those specimens which were, uh, and we observed that in shallow water, they, they were uh, particularly expressed uh, the, uh, the, the, the genes which are heavily involved in biomineralization, but identified already before that this biomineralization is the, this, uh, they create the skeletal um, uh, structures fast growing, fast growing skeletal structures, which were plenty of them here in the shallow water form, whereas in deep water, there were not so many, and they were actually. Uh, uh, the, this, 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 uh, this, uh, genes were not, uh, not, um, not expressed very, uh, the proteins were not expressed in this, this. And interestingly, that uh, the, in morphs which were trans, tra transplanted, so the corals which were transplanted from the deep water to the shallow water, they started, the expression of these uh, genes uh, uh, started. So they, they started to look like, like the shallow water because of the, uh, of the, of different expressions. So again, very strong argument that um, that this biology the, the the expression of genes and proteins involvement in the uh, in process is super important and you at that point already i can tell you that this this type of um, discovery is already very relevant to the fossil record because for example here is the the example of the fossil coral which is 40 million years ago i mean collected uh, represents the the eocene strata 40 million years ago and uh, is extremely well preserved. So with this type of preservation, you can maybe actually interpret whether this was the deep water or shallow water uh, form based on this micro uh, uh, structural features, which we identified in the modern coral. So this is a, a new dimension uh, of, interpret, uh, of interpreting uh, the, the, the coral morphology based on this, uh, uh, you know, uh, combined molecular and um, uh, and morphological uh, studies. So, uh, going really into macromorphology, 
you know, yes, please. Yes. Ah, I have only five minutes. Oh my God, so I have to really speed up. So, so uh, you know, okay. So, uh, you know, the, I mean, everybody who has the, the, the mathematical tools is fascinated with the, with the beauty of the nature. So there are several uh, beautiful books, um, also Polish, uh, uh, like Przemysław uh, Prusinkiewicz, uh, The Algorithmic Beauty of Plants. Uh, plenty of this type of approaches. And actually there is very interesting uh, uh, school um, led by, by uh, Kandorp in, 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 um, in the Netherlands, they, they, uh, they really investigated the aspect of the, of the coral growth, making this type of sil in silico modeling, considering, um, considering um, you know, the, the flow of the, of the water and, and dispersion of the nutrients. And you know, in all this um, modeling, they, of course, there were some new um, a new polyps appearing because of the nutrients, and then of course making uh, several iterations of the of this of this calcific calcification process in silico. They were interested how much this this um, um, external environment, but also uh, the, the 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 nutrient availability shapes the 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 macromorphology of the skeleton, and they obtain a very good results. So they are actually, uh, here you can see the actual uh, micro CT scans of the actual colonies, whereas they were able to, to replicate more or less the same shapes just based on, on few assumptions, like, like uh, distances between the, the polyps, the amount and, and direction of the flow of the, of the nutrients. So this is really fascinating that they were able at this scale to, to replicate almost uh, the shapes, the shapes. We are talking about, of course, the shapes. For example, here is a very interesting result that um, the, only, the only variable which is changing is the distance between the polyps. So if we are sitting, they are sitting either very closely or a little bit uh, uh, wider, and this results in a completely different shape of the colony, which makes sense, of course, because they are gathering food and then distribution of the food particles is different. So, so you know, but, but you can really obtain a m multiple different forms just based on this. Uh, what I wanted to say here is that, uh, okay, then this is, I think, the almost the, yeah, I think the, f the final part of my, my talk. Because, you know, the, the, the modern corals, um, okay, uh, modern corals, and we, if we are speaking about the, the coral, uh, the, the reef forming corals, we are talking about uh, animals which are involved in symbiosis, which, uh, of course, there is a dependence on this uh, uh, of the, on the, on the uh, light, you know, and, and how much the, the, the metabolites by the algae are influencing the, the, the corals. So there are many, many factors actually influencing the growth. But if we just focus on corals which are deep water, solitary, uh, deep water corals, then we avoid uh, many factors which, which, uh, which, which actually interfere. And that's why maybe, and this is, this is my, um, my project, which I would like maybe, maybe with uh, some sort of collaboration uh, to do, to understand what are the factors which are, uh, which can be so sort of geometrical shapes and how much the tissue uh, which is involved in, in, in the formation of the skeleton, how much this, this uh, geometrical, uh, geometrical shape is influencing the activity of the tissue. So this is more or less, but I will, I will show you what, what, uh, what I have in mind. So for example, here, the, dif the difference is that we have, uh, we have cor solitary corals and they are circular. They, they are perfectly symmetrical, uh, hexameral symmetry in this case. Whereas, in, in, if they are flat, the, the insertion of the, of the new septa is, uh, take place in a, in a different uh, regions. And this is, I think this is, this is because of the, of the geometry. There is, there is some rule, which, which uh, geometrical rule, which probably caused that, that, um, uh, that the septa, the, 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 the partitions, are formed in, 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 in a different uh, places. It, in, co in comparison to the, to the purely symmetrical uh, shape. But 
in the fossil record, we found such, for example, coral. And this was my only, <laughs> my only uh, uh, really approach to the problem because I have to describe this, this coral. And it was very strange because you see the, the septa, these partitions are very complicated. But maybe if you have the, the good eye, you already see what is, what, what is the, the principle here. The principle, this is almost instantly visible, that this, the septa are more or less, they are bifurcating, but the distances between them are more or less constant. Okay, and so I, I, I was making this type of calculations, how many of these uh, uh, bifurcations we have in certain uh, septa, and um, so this is the, the reconstruction of the coral, and this is the model, which uh, this is the only equation which, which I could uh, somehow understand, but there are many, many more uh, equations which absolutely I refuse to, 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 to quote. But um, so the, the idea was that we have, um, we have the septa, the partitions, and they, they need to, uh, so they, they, they are the, they are, these are the rules, they are equal, equal distances, and um, um, they retain approximately the same thickness um, during the growth, and then the, then everything is growing centripetally towards the the, the, the middle of the of the coral. Um, of course, the question is why this is important. Why only one time in in uh, in a history of corals such a coral uh, emerged? Maybe this was efficient. Uh, this bifurcation caused the efficient uh, digestive uh, function of the coral. Who knows? I have no idea. Of course, I made some, some assumption how, how this uh, anatomy was complicated. Maybe it was useful, but probably not very successful because the, the, this is the only time, one time. We have other, other modern corals which also have a very dense, um, dense uh, partitioning of, the, of this space. Um, so, the perspective. Perspective is that, um, you know, the David Raup was, was a paleobiologist, but he was also a mathematician. And he instantly was attracted by the, by the forms and um, created a very, very simple uh, mathematical, geometrical uh, model of the, you know, of the, of the gastropod or, or mollusk uh, shells. I mean, recognizing the few parameters which, which can cover basically all type of shells. And uh, so basically, you know, we, we can create such a morphospace, complete morphospace. But what he did, uh, he actually carved from this from the space those um, uh, examples which actually exist. So having this type of morphospace with very well delineated uh, areas that actually um, organisms are capable to 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 to, to, to form. And then having the time, which is the, the domain of the paleobiology you can create a sort of changing morphospace picture. And, uh, and here, here is another example. There, there are many papers which are exploring this. So making a theoretical models and then trying to find the, the fossil record um, examples. Corals are very complex. And you can imagine that this morphospace of corals will be enormous. And for example, here are the, 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 the fossil corals, which are almost identically uh, diversified as, as, as modern. These are really the very, very old uh, Triassic corals from 2000, uh, 240 million years ago. And beautifully preserved, by the way. Um, okay, so, okay, so this is the complexity of the, of the, of the issues which we should, uh, of course, consider thinking about the, 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 these different levels, hierarchical levels of skeletal organization um, when, when we are making this type of um, modeling. But what is fascinating is that, you know, in time, we had uh, the, 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 the sea geochemistry changed dramatically, the nutrient supply and recycling changed dramatically, so we have a big, big changes in evolution of, of life and evolution of, of corals, which should be visible in, in occupation occupation of the morphospace. That's why I think it is absolutely worthy to investigate this, just from the point of view of big picture of the morphospace evolution. And here are a few examples of this deep water uh, solitary corals. So there are no symbionts, but there are just different, uh, different uh, shapes. 
why they are so and you know what is the, the what is the what are the the rules the principles of formation of this or not or you know like like for example here we have some some in central structures some are not some are flat some are so there is there is a plethora of, of different morphologies which which maybe represent possibly represent some adaptive functions but we, we having without this type of big picture we don't we don't know simply um, basically that's it you know this is the last picture i i just uh, published it was a long time ago a sort of overview of um, of the solitary corals how what are these the strategies at that time you know i have no really clue about this all these processes which i was talking today but just to tell you one thing we observe for example in a, in a evolution we observe the, the corals are more uh, covering the, the the skeleton with the tissue this is absolutely clear from the from the very beginning the corals are sort of naked the the skeleton is naked whereas in evolution they start to be covered with the tissue and this is exactly the adaptation that allow them to 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 live in a very deep waters because without this covering of the tissue they would be immediately uh, dissolved and uh, with with the cover they can they can live in a, in a very very deep water <laughs> the problem is and this is the, the last sentence that actually uh, the coral itself it, unless it's living on the shallow water doesn't need the skeleton so this is example uh, when you put the coral in a, in a acid acidified uh, water uh, the, the skeleton is dissolved in this particular case the skeleton is dissolved and coral is very happy absolutely happy for a year it was happy and able to reproduce so you know so it's a it's a the problem why this coral other coral is living in a in a 7000 meter depth and still producing the, the skeleton doesn't need it but it produces um and that's it Yes. Uh, I think that um, uh, we, we at least we, we understand much more the, the basic uh, processes I mean at the very low level because you know if, if you if you would um, use the, the previous models and basically sort of abiotic precipitation then uh, then okay there is there is uh, of course organism but there is not really biology much involved whereas now if we know that there is a very uh, intimate uh, relation so obviously the uh, you know obviously every all ions which uh, which are used uh, by by the by the organism to build the skeleton coming from are coming from the from the seawater obviously but they filter this they are able uh, through cellular processes to 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 first of all to to use uh, you know calcium pumps and 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 so they manipulate with this so so it looks like like uh, to me it looks like like we have a sort of combination of the passive and active processes this is this is my understanding is that this is the major achievement of the recent year, uh, years that we started to understand that okay sometimes uh, I organism is saying okay I, I don't need to control this this is just automatic and sometimes I need to control this <laughs> so this is this is more or less what what we are now I think My question is the following. I mean, definitely studying coral, even solitary or the ones that we have created at the economist, uh, is very important. You need to convince us to do the global driven research. But uh, with this context, I would like to ask about the uh, phenomenon of the great coral reef 
of ending decline. We know it's been one of the biggest source of the aquatic life diversity. Uh, and biodiversity, we know, is very important now. And, and climate changes are definitely driven by many biodiversity uh, uh, regions on our planet. And I'm surprised, actually, up here, like, we're just seeing that epigenetically they can cause can adapt, they can change the gene expression, and they can change morphology, and they're happy with the spectrum without. I'm actually surprised that the coral reef actually is deteriorating, and can you comment what, what these species can start to maybe tell us how to help corals producing coral reef? Yeah, this is, this is, of course, obviously the, we, are, we are all concerned about the, the, the reefs and um, um, I can tell you a few things. One is that, for example, not, not uh, the, same, the, the same species, let's say, uh, of corals are behaving very differently in different environments, in different um, areas. For example, the, the same coral from the Red Sea uh, is much more resistant to the, to the elevated temperature that's that, uh, and thus the bleaching, you know, the removal of the, of the symbionts and, and basically that. In, compar in comparison to the, to the Pacific Ocean and Indian Ocean um, counterparts, why? Because there is a, a geological history behind, which uh, during the, the, the glaciation, the Red Sea was not existing, and then when, when the, 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 the sea level returned to normal, all the larvae, coral larvae, had to migrate through this sort of um, uh, bottleneck, which was super warm water. And that's why all these morphotypes which, which survived the, 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 tra the travel to the, to the Red Sea are uh, heat resistant. And, um, uh, well, another aspect is that, of course, I, we, uh, last year we had a symposium of fossil corals, but also many, many uh, modern um, uh, coral workers uh, arrived. I was talking with Charlie Veron, who is the, probably the most famous uh, sort of um, um, biologist working on the, uh, um, the, on the Great Barrier Reef, and he told me that, uh, you know, he has no hope for, 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 the, for the Great Barrier Reef I, as, a, as, a, as a structure, as a main body. But there are, uh, you know, corals which, uh, already th those corals which we investigated, the, the Stilophora, this is one of the species, Stilophora pistillata, they, they can uh, inhabit a quite wide range of, of depths. And so those which are living in a greater depth are more adaptable. And so there is hope in so-called mesophotic environments. So those which are not on the very shallow water, a little bit deeper, and they may ultimately, hopefully, uh, you know, rebuild the, the reefs in the in the past. Actually, we <laughs> we pu we published uh, a paper uh, together with with um, American colleagues, and the, 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 there is a one conclusion sentence in the very end that, you know, especially looking at the very long, uh, lo long uh, in, in deep in in geological time record of corals. So and we, and and information that corals survive so many uh, mass extinctions. So, you know, we are here, humans, but corals will survive us, for sure. For sure. Yes, it's, yeah, it's different. And also, you know, bones are, 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 you know, it's a, it's a tissue actually, so it's actually uh, re reworked, so so uh, the, the re resorbed and and the, the new uh, new bone is formed. So so there is not such a long record. We we can have, of course, in a, for example, in, in teeth enamel, we have access basically to our also chi childhood, but in the bones, the bones are quite dynamic structures, so not not fully. Yeah, yeah, in a sense. So let's thank the speaker again. And I know there are some online questions. Uh, hello. Hello. A am I already on the air or can I ask a question? Yes. Hello. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Multiplied. Yeah, well, that is actually what I would like to ask you the question. Well, that's too difficult. That was a great talk. Oh, okay. No, no, I, I can hear you. Yes. Yeah, please. Hello? Please. Yes. Please ask questions. Do you hear me? Yes. Or do you see me also? 
Yes. Okay, good. I'm Lukas Sturski. I apologize for talking from the outside world, but uh, uh, I, I, I'm impressed by your talk and I, I have a, some kind of a question and a comment. Uh, when I look up at your slides and on your description how the corals grow, then I realized that in your talk there was no reference to a branch of physics which is called the theory of self-organizing dynamical systems. For example, crystallization and forming uh, dynamically living structures in physics. And for example, you, you, you have shown us this beautiful periodic structure of a growing, uh, uh, well, are they animals or? Yes, 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 animals. And those animals. And that uh, looks almost identical as a pictures from a branch of theoretical metallurgy, which is based on what is called the Mullins and Sekerka instability. The fundamental instability, if you have a dynamical processes of grow, which are related to the diffusion and uh, nonlinearity imposed by the boundary condition, which is moving. This is a, called the Stefan problem in, in mathematics. When you, when you have the interface between the growing structure like your animals and the water, and there is a, a certain boundary condition related to the surface tension, difference in the concentration, uh, chemical affinity and so forth and so forth. And we know that those structures form patterns. And these patterns are discussed. We know, for example, why the dendrites are formed when the crystal grow and so forth. Would anybody in your field uh, ever looked up, or, or, or maybe, I, I mean, I apologize for that blunt question, but on, on that branch of physics, I mean, we, we now have the exact analytical solutions for a growing needle crystals and the dendritic structure. Yes. So that is interesting. Thank you for, and I apologize for it. No, no, I, 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 I appreciate your, your question. Of course, I was not, uh, not discussing this aspect because uh, first of all, uh, I am not an expert in, in these processes. However, however, um, somehow this, uh, this interpretation Li links to the to this traditional let's say spherulitic growth model of yes. course you know, yeah you know there, there are there are actually people who are using the quite advanced um, uh, the, the theoretical models of growth uh, showing that this is almost identical type of growth the problem is and that's why i more uh, addressed the, the the this biological issue because even if they look identical they are not they, they, they simply, the formation is really can be, and this can be uh, shown, uh, I mean, experimentally uh, shown, that this is because of the function of the uh, extraterrestrial function of the, of, the, of the polyp and the proteins, which, prote for example, proteins, but there are many much, much more components which influence the, the formation. So, you know, um, for me, uh, at the moment, and unless, unless there will be, uh, um, how to say, mm, okay, for me, the, the previous model, uh, really excluding the biology, uh, was, um, was not able to explain the phenomena, um, uh, the microscale phenomena we observe in the skeleton, because uh, you, you, for example, you refer to the to the to this sort of uh, periodic uh, formation of the of the of the crystals, whereas we have some coral skeletons which would which they do not have this type of periodicity. If if we assume the similar process, of course we should have we should observe similar uh, structures, but we do not. And this okay. and. Yeah, not necessarily. Not necessarily. I know. <laughs> not necessarily because the difference between the periodic growth and the fractal growth is a very subtle. And if you have so complicated chemical situation where you have not uh, two components 
like in the simple models in metallurgy. But if you have a many components which are growing at a different uh, uh, velocity, so to say, and if the ratios of those velocities turn out not to be the ratios of integers and so forth, you you will you will get the growths which are not really periodic but the fractals and so forth. So there, I mean, I understand that there must be a tremendously complicated situation there, and uh, whatever touches a biology gets extremely complicated. I just wanted to make a comment that the uh, that the physicists we are slightly late. Uh, but perhaps we are uh, we are now going to help you a little yeah. bit because this theory of growth is uh, is uh, mm, developing very much and uh, it's it is an active field. Yeah, actually, this was the purpose. This was the purpose in this colloquium. But we have to we have to finish. So we are going to. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. So, bye bye. So let's thank the speaker again.